In this video, I'm going to show you some of the basic steps that I take when I am editing a video that I made in Camtasia. Camtasia is my favorite screen recorder. I've used more expensive ones, I've used less expensive ones, and I'm going to do demonstrations of several of them. But this is my favorite by far. And as soon as I am done, um, this is what opens up, it's the produce and share, and I'm going to edit the track that I did on Audacity. And you can see and here. I bring this in. Of a classroom and talk, you might as well make that into a pod that I've brought in my tutorial. Now here my volume levels are a little high. Now I sort of have my own brand identity because I've got my own um, YouTube channel and I have a student who did for me a video or a sound bite that I like to use and his name is Matthew Wasick and he does He's, when he was working at MCC, he did a lot of my video editing for me, and he's fantastic. But he's created a bunch of online, and I need to bring in his file. I'm going to choose File, Import Media, Music, and this is something he created for me. And I use this at the beginning of all of my videos. And I like to, and here I'm going to zoom in so I can see more. I like to have this in when I edit the sound because it comes in really loud. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my control key. Uh, today I'm using a PC. I use both Mac and PC. And I'm going to go into audio and I'm going to just enable noise removal which should get rid of some of my dog barking in the background on that one. And I'm going to enable volume leveling and then I'm going to give it a quick listen. And this has been a lot of the success of audio books which I also love sounds good. Now the next thing I usually do is I right click and I choose apply smart focus and what this is going to do is wherever you see the smart focus here it will adjust where I'm zooming in on my screen so that it focuses and makes it more tightly zoomed. Now if I want I can zoom it in further than that. I'm going to change this to about um, 50%. This is my whole window that I recorded. This is what's in focus is in here. So I can make, I should not skew it, work from the corners. I can make it go and zoom in so that you really just see audacity. And then that'll stay for this segment. Okay, and that's fine. And then I'm going to just sort of scroll through and check, see if I need to zoom in any more. I always scroll through. I don't listen to the whole thing over and over again. It just it gets it can be very time consuming to do a lot of videos, but I usually go through and at least pan through to make sure that everything is showing up pretty much the way I want it to. And then I have one more thing that I like to do, and in my library, um, I usually put a title, and I like this one, and I'm going to use my basic title, and I'm going to drag it right into my screen, and then I can move the playhead over it, double click on it, and I like to use a size 28 font. And since it's a black background, slightly off yellow, and Arial's fine. And then I will call this Teaching with Technology Podcasting Using Audacity. Now, since I have a YouTube channel, I really like, again, Camtasia is very friendly for this. Um, under Produce and Share, I've got several options. You can share to YouTube to screencast. You can just make your own thing if you don't want it out publicly. If I'm sending a video to a student, because I also do videos for students, I just make it a plain MP4 and I 
send it to them through Canvas so it's private. If I'm answering, if many students have answered a question, I'll just, or asked a question, I'll just do a generic video, reply to everybody, put it on YouTube, and put it in the classroom. I'm very concerned with privacy rights, so when I'm working with student work, if there's any way that you can tell that it belongs to that student, I don't put it out publicly. So I would prefer to recreate whatever issue that they're having and record it and make a public video. But if I'm doing something specific to a student, like grading their final projects, since I'm doing web design, I like to capture the screen and point and show them what I'm looking at and send them a video grade rather than write up a bunch of stuff because I want them to see exactly what I'm looking at. And sometimes that's made a big difference because I've had students legitimately argue their grade because they created something on a Mac and I'm looking at it on a PC or we're using different browsers and something gets really skewed out of proportion. And when they contact me saying, I see what you're seeing but it's not what I'm seeing, then I can help them solve that problem. And that happens more often than you'd expect when we're working with web design. But for here, I use Share to YouTube and I've got my own channel and it knows me. And so I'll put my title in here. podcasting with audacity and a description and some tags to help people find it podcasting teaching with technology audacity and this is under the category of education and I'm going to hit finish and it's going to take it a little while to upload it what you'll see once it's done and you want to make sure you're logged in yep and that's my account and so I can go to my video manager and this is where I would grab the information once it's and I've got typos there so I can go in and fix that too so in any case once you've got it you can share and in canvas just copy and share the link um, in my website I share by embedding and you can just copy and paste the code if you're going to embed don't embed into canvas it keeps breaking just share the link and so you have let's see I want to edit this and then you can go in and you can edit everything your title whatever so I can go back and fix horrible typos because I was very tired and I can't spell um, screen images but they can also if you are advanced and they have put you on the education channel they can add additional things for you um, I typically use my the Creative Commons license um, I let other people use stuff I may mean, not put that in but with education I typically put in my name and I can add if I've created a website for it um, I can add course material type name URL and I can link back to it but that you get that option when you join YouTube EDU and then they have to go through your videos and approve them and I've been on that for about a year so that's the editing portion of using Camtasia and uploading it now I will warn you it takes a while so you can keep recording a new you can start recording a new um, screencast while the other one's uploading or you can go through and do other work or grab a cup of coffee relax and feel like you're being really productive and just watch those bars move across the screen boy am I busy so that's a short demonstration of what I do to publish my project and then share it back to canvas so if I were sharing this one back to canvas I would just go back to and I can just uh, 
don't want that. I can just go back to Video Manager and I could just go back in, click on here, and hit Share. I do also publish these to a Twitter feed. Some of my students subscribe to that. Students can also subscribe to the YouTube channel.